Regional airline LIA devises formula as strategy to bolster non-lucrative flights. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Friday, May 3rd, I am Rakesha St. Louis. Regional airline LIAT has devised a formula called the Minimum Revenue Guarantee, or the MRG, which seeks to ensure that every LIAT flight that takes off must expect break-even revenue. It is a strategy to address the challenges faced on non-lucrative flights. Tourism Minister Dr. Clarice Mudes Cohen explained the rationale behind the formula during a meeting of the House of Representatives on Friday on the heels of a meeting she attended in Antigua Tuesday to discuss the future of the regional airline. The formula recommends that the flights that do not yield a certain amount and what they have done is calculate the routes and what is the break-even number of seats that must be occupied. And sometimes you go on a layout and the plane is full or pretty full. Sometimes you go and you can count the number of heads on the layout flight. And so we have to ask ourselves, you know, how can layout survive with the ups and the downs? You go on a jet blue from New York to Grenada and it is full. And there's a demand now for more flights from New York to Grenada. There is even a demand for, for Canada, even though Air Canada is doing daily flights. There is a demand for that a, a certain, a, a during certain periods. So imagine for Liat, where the demand may not be so high, how can they compete with other airlines? Not compete in terms of where they travel to, the routes, but compete in terms of generating income. And so that formula was presented to us that when above a certain threshold, governments do not have to pay anything. But below that, if they do not reach break even, governments have to contribute. The tourism minister says while they have asked the airline to revisit the formula, they are aware that Liat must take a business like approach to continue to service 100,000 people per year. So, Mr. Speaker, they're going to revisit the formula. But we also said that when we exceed and you make profit, we have to look at how we can offset a bit what government needs to pay for the not productive flights and um, give us some credit for that. So hopefully we will not have to pay as much. But we in the Ministry of Tourism, we are aware that we must do more marketing. We must create more incentives for people to visit Grenada so that our flights are always above the break even level and we already have started to have meetings we'll be having a number of consultations um, in the next few weeks uh, on Tuesday when I went to Antigua there was a consultation with the private sector and I am pleased to say that there's a growing PPP relationship between the government entities and the private sector and that has augured well they have come up with excellent suggestions they are willing to help us execute those and implement those suggestions but very importantly several of them have come up with the finances to assist to assist in in the financing of those things during a recent meeting in St. Kitts CARICOM leaders were advised that Liat can go down based on its current situation in response Prime Minister Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell had said and I quote if Liat goes down it is going to take some time for a new airline to emerge. It will damage our economy, our country, and create tremendous hardship for our people. So it is not in our interest to let it go down. And given that we have seen a trend of change in recent months, we have agreed that we will contribute towards the cash injection that the company needs." Unquote. Dr. Modes Cohen told the meeting of the House that Grenada injected $1.3 million into the survival of the airline, and this was well justified. The number of passengers for arriving from through Liat to Grenada in 2018 was 44,333 persons. 44,000 people, 44,333 persons arrived. And between arrivals and departure, Liat accounted for 91,537 persons. So $1.3 million, when you look at 91 million, excess of 91 million persons, 
$1.3 million is well justified. 44,000 people come into our country, generate income. Many of them as tourists. Many of them would be people from the diaspora coming back to their country. But the majority come as tourists and they do spend money and they are important to the economy of this country. These people who visit our country by themselves could generate the $1.3 million and much, much more than that. So I think it's important. Sometimes people make utterances. Why spend that money? But Mr. Speaker, when the threat was made that Liat would shut down, I believe all of us understood the importance of keeping Liat afloat. Minister Modest Kerwin is happy that talk which surfaced a few weeks ago that Liat will shut down will not become a reality. She hopes that progressively political interference will be removed from the management of Liat, which was given a mandate during a meeting she attended in Antigua on Tuesday that it must begin operating as a business. Last week, two members of Liat's management team were in Grenada to meet with the airlift committee on the way forward for the airline. Continuing with the news, Grenada's Prime Minister and the lead head for science and technology in the CARICOM quasi-cabinet, Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, wants to see greater collaboration among regional countries in the area of technology. Speaking at the Caribbean Internet Governance Forum organized by the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, the, T, the CTU, in Trinidad and Tobago this week, Dr. Mitchell noted that insufficient progress has been made towards the creation of the CARICOM single ICT space. Dr. Mitchell called for the elimination of silos to create a seamless digital space in the region. Even in our own countries, within different divisions, we operate in silos in our own country. We talk about IT as a service, but every little department wants its own little IT, as if it's an ego thing. Instead of recognizing it is about service to the people of our country. We have to be educating and fighting with our own citizens to let them understand it's not about that ego, it's about the service that we deliver and the necessity to integrate everything we do. My dear sisters and brothers, therefore, the elimination of sil silos results in greater efficiency and effectiveness in the use of our scarce human and and financial resources. In this technological age, there is absolutely no justification for replicating and duplicating efforts in each of our Caribbean islands and expending already scarce resources. The Prime Minister added that we must be prepared to work together to pull our limited human and financial resources to achieve our development objectives. We cannot continue to allow our failure to collaborate to result in stagnation and lost opportunities for advancement. We must take charge of our own development. Colleagues, what I've seen here, I've said it also at heads meeting, and I will say it again, and continue to say it until the end of my period of service. My dear sisters and brothers, therefore, the concept of pooling resources is not new. And today, as most countries face immense pressures on national budgets, declining economic performance, rising public debt, we must optimize the use of financial and human capital through collaboration and pooling. There is no other way. The Prime Minister also cited technology as a critical pillar in regional integration. The Union's Caribbean Internet Governance Forum was held under the theme, Digital Transformation, Do It. Sisters and brothers, the future of CARICOM and the CARICOM single market and economy rest in our hands. We owe it to our children and our grandchildren. Technology, if appropriately used, provide us with the means to fulfill our integration aspirations, which is, of course, crucial. We can still achieve all the benefits of the CARICOM single ICT space and the CSME, 
but we must move with much more purpose and commitment. We must view investments in technology as the means by which we will improve the lives of the Caribbean citizens. It is a vehicle that ensures that none of our people will be left behind. In other words, this idea of rethinking that if we do it right in my country and the others and we are ahead, then we look good. It doesn't work so. If we do it here and the next one is left, we also suffer the consequences. The only real benefit is that all of us, all citizens, are in fact on this platform. This is the National Report. More news after the break. The eyes of the world are on us more than ever. So, so, so let's take it to them. Saturday, May 4th, the Spice Mask Cooperation launches Spice Mask 2019. The Caribbean's biggest, biggest big, summer big, festival. Big, big, this year's launch starts with a roadshow from Arisa Cop to the National Stadium. From 3 p.m., bring out your last year's costume and join the parade. It's one big experience with the display of Fancy Man, Traditional Man, Moko Jumbi, and the most envied Jack Jam. The official opening is at the National Stadium, featuring your favorite soca artists and DJs, Calypso Mona, Still Pan Champion, and presentations of the 2019 Carnival Queen contestants, plus, plus, plus displays of 2019 costumes, SMC show tickets, and other attractions to be won. Saturday, May 4th, the National Stadium, the launch of Spice Mask 2019. Bring out the entire family. Log on to SpiceMaskGrenada.com for more. Welcome back. The Ministry of Education says it has had a successful series of meetings with Mr. Glenroy Cumberbatch, the registrar of CXC, who was in Grenada for two days, meeting with parents, teachers and educators. Some of the burning issues were discussed and according to Education Minister Honorable Emmeline Peer, they received positive feedback, which highlighted the need for an effective flow of information. During a meeting of the House of Representatives on Friday, Minister Pierce said it was made clear during the session with teachers that SBAs are not meant to be a final exam, but an avenue to give students all possible opportunities to develop their skills. In this vein, she says there is need for greater supervision of students' work. We ought to be doing far more supervision and monitoring of what is happening in our classroom. Because if a child is starting an SBA, Two weeks before the deadline, something is fundamentally wrong somewhere. And so it means that we have to take responsibility, we have to accept responsibility, and it cannot be business as usual as it relates to our officers who are supposed to be monitoring what is happening in our classroom. Mr. Speaker, as, as I'm saying this, at this time, CXC should be meeting with officials at the Ministry of Education. So we're not just doing teachers, parents, or ministry officials must also hear the message. And they must also be reminded of what their role is in this process. That story just ended the national report for today, Friday, May 3rd, recapping the top story. Regional airline LIA devises formula as strategy to bolster non-lucrative flights. On behalf of everyone here at the Government Information Service who made this newscast possible, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time.